And our next guest is from the social network uh, Kaixin, uh, Mr. Guo Wei. Uh, so the interview will also be done in Chinese, but let me just say a few words about Kaixin Wang. It's, uh, uh, it was the first social network that actually hooked me before I actually really started using Facebook heavily. And uh, as far as I know, it was the first place in the world where a farming, Farmville-type game became popular. Uh, and there was a, certainly a period of time in Kaixin Wang's early years where you couldn't go to an office uh, of white-collar workers in Beijing or Shanghai without seeing people play the game. Um, so, uh, on that note, um, let's uh, get uh, Mr. Guo Wei, uh, who is the Vice President at Kaixin, to introduce the company. Okay. Okay. Uh, First of all, would like to uh, introduce Kaixin. Our company was established in 2008. At that time, it is not open for public registration, but uh, actually through that type of uh, invitation. By the end of 2008, we have grown very fast, mainly in Beijing and Shanghai, these two cities. Ever since 2008 and 2009, our company, our business actually um, penetrated into the other cities that tie two and tie three cities. Now the registered users of our Kaixin is around uh, 100 million by the end of last year, with a revenue of with a revenue of around. Uh, actually, we do not have a strong revenue because in 2008, we do not have revenue. In 2009, we break even. In 2010, we actually make profits. Profit. Um, do you think what, what's the unique features of Kaixin uh, to distinguish itself from Ren Ren other SNS networks? I think there are still uh, huge differences. First is the, the user differences. Xiaonei or Ren Ren actually first uh, started from the universities in Beijing. Well, um, Tencent uh, focused on the younger generation. Well, Kaixin is different. It's not uh, starting from the universities. By, at the beginning of 2008, that is the initial stage of our funding of the company. Um, many people might actually oppose to us that do not try again to establish SNS, especially among the white collars. White collars. Almost all the investors thought that SNS should start from campus because the campus students have enough time and have strong desire to actually network with their friends. But uh, the white collars are very busy, especially now China is developing fast in terms of its economy. So the white collars are very busy, do not have time to actually socialize or network with their friends or colleagues. But we can see actually it's just because uh, they don't have time, that makes our opportunity. Because, and that is also makes us different from Ren Ren and Tencent. Because we get to know the, um, the needs of the white collars in the Taiwan Type 2 cities. Because I think each person has strong desire or needs to socialize and to network. So how can we use our time? Maybe the students have enough time, but uh, for white colors, they have maybe uh, some different uh, fragmented time. So that's also the focus of our company. 
the innovation part of our company in designing our products and our services. As we know, many people may not live long in China, especially for some foreigners. I'd like to explain the definition of a white person. Uh, uh, for example, for Chinese people, well, what do we mean by white color users, which means those middle class users? However, maybe there's a lot of middle class people in the US. If they have a stable job and they can maintain a decent life. However, in China, since reform and opening up, that's about 30 years, uh, we experienced something that happened in U.S. for 100 years. You can see that in those major cities in Beijing and Shanghai, there are many people, uh, they maybe go to a big uh, office buildings and have a decent life. However, there is a great number of people in China, they born in rural areas, and they live in rural areas in China. Only a, a few of them will come to big cities like Beijing and Shanghai and work there. So there is a big difference between different people in from different areas. So most foreigners, they only know those people live in Beijing and Shanghai. Actually, they only reflect one small aspect of Chinese population. Actually, there is a, a la large amount of people that you have no chance to meet. And they have totally different demand from those people you met, uh, those white color people. So the demand I mean is the demand of those white color people. Actually, China's uh, mobile internet, there is a great number of companies that are satisfying the demand of those people. You never match those from the Lulu areas in China. For those white color people, they know a lot of information and they are really trendy and they know what is going on in the world. And it's really hard to know what they really need. And for us, our caching and network will really study their need, the demand of those white color workers. So uh, you mean that those uh, the uh, market is divided into three parts. One is from university, the other uh, the workers, uh, that, that's the market of Ren Ren. And the other is from the rural areas, like in tier three and tier two cities, that's a market of Tencent. And your major market is those white color users that's from the big cities. And, uh, and uh, you do not pursue users from tier two and tier three cities. Is that right? Actually, uh, it's not our strategy. That's according to the situation there. I just mentioned that there is a big difference between different users. Uh, my one product cannot satisfy the demands of all the group of people, but I really support that the users from the other group, they can also use our service which means that we are not catered for those uh, groups like from uh, rural areas, but they can still use our network. And we think that since China is developing very fast, those people from rural areas, they can become white color workers, and then they can become our target customers. And so for the users based of white colors, how many? How many? <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe we can do an estimate. The last question is about your game, about the uh, theft of vegetables. Uh, suddenly, the, this game is a popular game in China. 
why it suddenly become so popular? Well, I think that our advantage in doing this Kaixin one uh, is our product, and uh, this vegetable theft game is one product from us. Uh, it is popular because we know what uh, our target users are thinking about. This program is successful because what, number one, it costs a uh, little time. It, it's, it's different from playing a web game. It's a social game. Uh, you can you will have social factor and the game factor in this small game. Actually, for Chinese people, there are two important things. One is the game itself, the other is your game mate. So for this vegetable theft game, if you do not uh, steal the vegetables from your good friends, it has no sense. Uh, with so those people just want to uh, steal the vegetables from those um, your friends, and then uh, the, your friends will be unhappy. So for some friends, uh, people are quite busy, so we can meet every day. And uh, however, I can steal your vegetables, and you can steal my vegetables. It's like a kind of interaction. So maybe you will uh, complain about me, and it's okay. Actually, it's a, a kind of friendship deepened. We can maintain our friendship through social games from Kaising 01, and you know what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about. Uh, this is also a way to maintain a good friendship. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope to see you in my vegetable patch soon. <laughs> <laughs>